So I was editing one of my main videos right now, but I just received this yesterday. This is called a COB LED. And the source to the information that will be in this video will be in the description. And apparently these are a step up from surface mount LED arrays. So if you didn't know, when it comes to those flat LED panels you see people using for lighting, they can be made out of two or technically you could even use these, although I don't even, I'm not even sure if there is any lighting solution that uses like these five millimeter LEDs. I'm pretty sure they're all surface mount. But I actually have a very good example right beside me right now. And this was not planned. This is a massive coincidence, but I actually have a surface mount LED example. I could not have a better example for this video. So this flashlight that I got from the dollar store um, actually has a COB LED on the top. And, well, a very bad one, but uh, a COB LED on the top, a surface mount LED array on the front. And yeah, I don't know why I thought there was a third one. Probably because there was three settings. But essentially, the difference between this surface mount LED array and this giant COB LED, as you might be able to tell from the similarities in how they look, this COB LED is a giant surface mount LED, essentially, where now this is the part where I'm still trying to figure out if it's if the LED is actually like etched or whatever out of the silicon, like are they doing what they do with transistors? but with LEDs on a smaller scale? Or is it mounting the LEDs using tiny wires? I really don't know if that is the reasoning for why. Let's continue reading. So here they have a picture explaining. Okay, so this is a very good image. So they have a picture on the website here saying that a 10 by 10 millimeter array of LEDs if they were made of normal dual inline package LEDs, according to the website, would only be able to hold nine of these LEDs. Surface mount would be able to do about 40, but COB would be able to do about 342 LEDs in the same area. So I'm actually planning to use this for recording. If it actually does end up working, I'm gonna like buy more of them and just make my own lighting solutions instead of going and buying my own. But one interesting thing I noticed here is the positive and negative are on these sides and not here. So I don't know which side is positive, which side is negative. Um, could it be that base plate is ground and these two are connected? Or am I just being extremely stupid? I don't know, but I'm gonna use a multimeter to try and see if that's gonna give me a value. So it's been a while since I've tried this out, but if I remember correctly, I could connect multimeter leads to an LED. And I forget what I was checking for. Was it continuity or resistance or voltage, I don't know what it was, but it might have been voltage. Um, let's see. So let me get the multimeter plugged in here. Let me zoom out a tiny bit. Okay, so let's see what it was that I was checking for. Could it have been voltage? Because I do know that diodes do have a photoelectric effect. So it could have been voltage that I was checking for. I don't know if LEDs have the same photoelectric effect. Hmm, let's see. Let's see if it changes. Yeah, it does. Okay, that is cool. They do have a photoelectric effect. See if I cover it with my hand. Whoa, that is that is a massive difference. Okay. Well, I was remembering correctly. <laughs> I was really expecting that to be wrong. I thought I would have to cut this part out, but no. Look at that. Put it under the light, 1.5 volts. <laughs> and then I cover it with my hand. And I, look, I'm not even touching the wires. Watch. When I put it here, let me focus on it. Okay. And then I'm gonna 
Okay, and then watch what happens when I turn this on over it. Look at that. Oh, what happened? Interesting. Oh, wait. Whoa. How is it making that much potential? Are these in like series or something? Like series parallel? That's probably what it is. They wouldn't give much current though. We have now used the multimeter to find where the positive is and where the negative is because the labeling on here was backwards. Now let me check and see if that base plate is actually even connected. No, it is not. Okay. So leaving our positive and negative on the tabs that they're currently connected to, I'm going to disconnect them from the multimeter and connect them to the power supply. So this is a 50 watt chip that I got. I could get up to 100 watts. So the reason I got a 50 watt chip instead of the 100 watts because I could get up to 100 watts of power is because I am going to be cooling this chip using a custom cooling solution. And the prototype that I have at the moment provides about 50, just over 50 watts of cooling power or at least it should based on my approximate estimates. It might be off by about 10 watts plus or minus. But in this video, we're just gonna be laying it on a heatsink and quickly powering it on. And of course, making sure I put something insulating on here so we don't cause a short. So actually I'm just gonna hang one tab off the side and I'm gonna put it on the bigger heatsink just so we have a little bit more thermal mass. Okay. And yes, there is no thermal paste on here, but this is gonna be just a quick test. But before we do that, I just need to set the voltage on the power supply to, let's set it to eight volts for now. So I need to set my over voltage protection to, let's put it on 16. Or let's do 18. And then set our voltage to Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight point nine, seven point nine, eight. Okay. Now we're going to plug the LED in. And we are going to see if I made a massive mistake using the multimeter to find the polarity or not. I don't think I will because I've used that method before. So in three, two, one, go. Hmm. So eight volts didn't work. I'm hoping it's not reverse polarity. That's the problem. I'm going to go right up to 11.98 volts, which is the rated voltage for this. Well, 12 volts is. And in three, two, one. Whoa. Okay. Never mind. That works. And that works very well. So let me focus in on that. In three, two, one. Whoa. Okay. That is, that is, whoa. That is, that is brighter than the entire lighting I have here. Okay, that is, oh my God, I can't even see now. Okay, I'm gonna have to, okay, just a couple of seconds because I'm seeing a yellow square everywhere I look now. When I close my eyes, I see like that yellow square that just turned on. Okay, I'm gonna cover my eyes. And why am I pushing on that button? I am completely blind right now. Okay, in three, two, one. Whoa. Okay, I can look at it through my phone. I can feel heat coming off of it. You know, maybe we should look at this. It would work if we turn the light away, but I was gonna say with the thermal camera, just like maybe point it away so that the light isn't interfering with it. Just like, look how bright this is. Okay, that's getting warm, Never mind. Let me put that back here. And let's see how long I can keep it on without it getting too warm. So three, two, one. So it's drawing 2.22 amps at 11.98 volts. Pretty decent. So 12 times 2.28. I'm going to turn it off because it's getting a little bit warm. 
And wow, that is a nice light. Like, let's see. It's not too warm. I'm going to turn it on upside down so you can see how well of a lighting solution this might make. Nice. So like, imagine having a bunch of these in a row. On a heat sink or something. That would be very nice. Okay, so I think I'm actually going to be using these as a lighting solution because that is very impressive. And yes, of course, we will be testing these out with supercapacitors on my channel. So if that is something you want to see, please do subscribe. And if not, well, that's okay too. Thank you for watching. And I'm going to go back to editing my main video on the supercapacitors now that I know this works. And remember to like the video if you like the video.